The individual strives for perfection. That quest for perfection has obstacles. But through determination, strength, and finesse, for one fleeting moment, each gymnast may realize a goal. And from each athlete's personal journey, individuals combine to become a team. Women's Gymnastics next on Prime Sports. of the University of Washington in Seattle, Prime Sports brings you Pac-10 women's gymnastics action as the University of Washington entertains Arizona State University. Hi, everybody. I'm Todd Pickett along with Betty Adams, and thanks for joining us for a meet featuring two of the top teams on the West Coast and a couple of teams with interesting blends of experience and talented newcomers as we take a look at the preseason rankings for gymnastics in the top 20. All seven of the Pac-10 schools who have programs are ranked in the top 20. Arizona State and Washington coming into this meet at 9th and 14th, respectively. It is very early in the year, though, for both of these two teams. Absolutely, and you know they're very competitive teams, and actually what's real interesting is they finished in the NCAA's last year 10 and 11 respectively Huskies coming in at 11. Now both these teams uh, early in the season have done very well. Arizona State with uh, a loss to Utah a victory against Minnesota but the Sun Devils are going to be without All-American Tina Brinkman. Katie Freeland and Gina Holleran are going to have to pick up part of the load. And they sure can pick up the load. Katie Freeland is also an All-American on vault. She finished third nationally last year in vault and is also outstanding on floor exercise. Gina Holleran is kind of an unknown a freshman coming in who's really just had club experience. So it'll be interesting to see if she can pick up another good all-around score. She won the all-around for ASU in their last meet. Now Washington bringing back many letter winners from last year's team, but two very talented newcomers have uh shown brightly in the first two meets for Washington. Absolutely, and boy, is that is that the kind of thing you want to see as a coach, having freshmen that come in and contribute. Clara is incredible. She is outstanding on bars and vault and does very well on beam and floor. Jamie has been sort of a surprise to Coach Levesque. He said he's been so pleased with the fact that she's come in and just nailed the vault and absolutely is one of their top vaulters right now. We'll be talking a lot more about Clara Kudlikova tonight. Uh, former member of the Czech national team. She's not scored below a 9.5 in any of her events so far far this season so a uh, very strong performance so far and uh, really this Washington team taking on Arizona State part of the challenge that Bob Levesque has put in for this team to face more talented squads during a year and he's done an outstanding job building a program of not just great gymnasts but a great schedule and we keep talking about every year the upgrades this team has seen and this schedule this year is tough Utah right off the bat is not an easy second meet for you yeah road meets against Arizona and Utah both nationally ranked of course and the Huskies have done very very well though. We'll tell you about that and get you ready for more of tonight's competition when we return to Seattle on Prime Sports. Welcome back to Seattle. Teams being introduced to the spectators. Arizona State out on the mat. The Huskies uh, just getting ready to head out. And we mentioned the Sun Devils rank ninth, and they're going to be without not only the All-American Tina Brinkman, but also sophomore Bridget Sandman, who has a hyperextended knee. So uh, they're a little bit short on depth, but they've uh, come up with some teams as uh, some good performances and uh, some more gymnasts kind of filling things out as well. Arizona State is coached by John Speedy. He's in his 15th year, and prior to tonight's meet, we had a chance to talk to him a little bit about what it's like being on the road and coming up to Seattle to face Washington. Well, we're looking to come in and hit our routine, but we don't. I think Washington is a very good team this year. It's early for everyone, but our goal is to land on our feet on our dismount and to try to hit out of 24 sets, 24 routines. Uh, and I think a team that the team that hits the most routines is probably going to come out on top. I think any time you go on a road trip, you need to be about a point to two points better than that team or, or you're going to have some problems. 
John's uh, well aware of road scoring and what can happen there. Meanwhile, Betty uh, Washington with a lot of gymnasts back. And we set off the top losing the first two meets, but when you realize you were on the road at number 15, Arizona, on the road at number three, Utah, and that road score at Utah was the highest regular season road score in school history. Bob LeBeck has to be pleased with the first two meets. Absolutely. He comes into this meet with Arizona State just perfect. You want to be coming off of a meet like Utah, an extremely tough team that had a home scoring advantage rolling into an ASU. He is really pumped up, and so is the team. And I'll tell you what, they've got a great shot tonight to come out on top. And we had a chance to talk to Bob LeBeck prior to tonight's meet about that subject, being back home and hopefully being over the early season jitters. Well, we started our season with an inner squad you know, in front of the audience, and that usually gets the jitters out. And we've had two away meets, one in Arizona and one in uh, uh, Utah. And the one in Arizona, we really got the jitters out because we had quite a few falls. But uh, actually, it was our highest starting score of 187.7, the highest starting for a season, and we improved four, four points on that in Utah. So being home is definitely an advantage. You have your hometown judges, your hometown crowd, and, and everyone is uh, you know rooting and pulling for you. Uh, but then again, like tonight is a parents' night, and a little more pressure on the kids. The friends are there, and and the other students who you know who know them around campus, and and so they um, they will feel a little more nervous tonight, I think, than they did in the first two. But they've got some of the jitters out, and they feel feel pretty confident tonight. And as you can see, the parents are out on the mat with their protégés, as it were, their prodigy, to be more exact, actually, taking a look at the meet rotation for the two teams in the dual meet. We'll show you how the uh, schools will get things started here in just a second. Washington will start out on vault. Arizona State on the bars. They'll ro rotate for the second rotation. And then in the second half of the meet, Washington on beam and Arizona State closing the meet on beam. Of course, uh, Bob LeBeck able to get a little bit of an advantage being at home. But uh, really, between the two schools with the marks they posted so far, it should be a very tight meet going in, Betty. It should be a great meet. And you know what's going to be real interesting is traditionally ASU is very strong on vault in a kind of a change of events. We have the UW actually being strong on vault as well. We'll be back to start tonight's meet right after this. Welcome back to Seattle as Arizona State and Washington going through their final warm-ups prior to the start of this meet. Arizona State has won the last five dual meets between these two teams as you watch the Huskies warming up for the Vault event. And Vault is going to be really interesting tonight. As we were mentioning, Bob Levesque thinks this is probably the Huskies' best event and uh, these gals have improved over last year tremendously in the vaults they're throwing. Well, as a matter of fact, Washington already set a school record in the vault in their opening meets here in the season. They've only been through two meets and already done that at a 48-5-5, so it could be a, a very strong event. We mentioned, of course, Utah, a common opponent for the two teams. The Huskies scoring a 191-10 and losing at Utah. Arizona State opened the season with a 189-950 in losing in Salt Lake City. Here's the way Washington will start out on the vault. Heather Cooper, Eileen Castillo, Christine Niebling, Joan Grieve, Clara Kudilkova, and Jamie Stauffer. And again, trying to put, for those of you that haven't watched gymnastics before, your stronger performers at the end. On the bars for Arizona State, Jennifer McKenna, Katie Freeland, Carrie Courtney, Megan Wright, Gina Holleran, and Dana Lister. Five competitors in the all-around. We'll tell you a little bit more about them as we go on. And looking at the bars, Arizona State getting ready there. Meanwhile, Heather Cooper set with the first fault for Washington. Handspring front, and she was just a little bit short on that landing. She had plenty of height to get around in the rotation, but just didn't quite open up in time to stand that vault up. First of two vault attempts. As she talks over strategy with assistant coach Tanya Chaplin. We'll take a look. See her coming in in her pre-flight. Good repulsion. Again, the rotation, she just let herself drop down out of that. And as a quick reminder, handspring front does not start at a 10-0. She is being scored from a 9-9. That is the value of that vault, is a 
There's your career best. Her season high so far this year, 9.0. Ready for the judges. First vault was scored an 8.75. She would have taken a five tenths deduction for that for that fall with her hands going down to the mat like that. Oh, again, just a little bit short on that landing. Maybe a little bit nervous in front of the home crowd. First time this year. And the parents as well. Now Arizona State getting things adjusted for the bars and Jennifer McKenna will start. One of three gymnasts we have tonight from Allentown Central Catholic High School. Second ball an 8.50 for Heather Cooper, so she'll stay with the 8.75. But McKenna and Gina Holleran of Arizona State and Kim Rucci of Washington all went to the same high school back in Allentown, Pennsylvania. You can see her moving very well. The judges are going to look for speed as well as form on the bars. That was an unfortunate catch there. She was on target, but she was just a little bit quick letting go with those fingertips. Take a minute to kind of regain composure. Gina had a 9-6 on the bars in the dual meet against Minnesota. And uh, Jennifer McKenna had a 9.35, the two Allentown competitors. Career best for Jennifer McKenna here in the bars for the junior is a 9.75. And this is probably the toughest part is getting back on and regaining that concentration after you've had a fall on bars. Very nice release. She's going to pick back up some speed here for a dismount by doing giant swings. Fly away from her back. Take another look here. Just had her fingertips on and just could not quite hang on there. Coach John Spini spotting in the background and uh, walking away as she fell. Eileen Castillo, the most promising freshman on the Husky squad a year ago. At 9.80, Mark, you saw second best in school history. She set up the NCAA for her here. Cast in front, and no surprise that our main says her favorite event is the ball. And again, she has improved tremendously as well. You'll notice in her vault, second time around, she has tremendous height in the post-flight part of her vault, and, uh, which is a blessing and it can be a curse, because if she can't open up in time, she can go flying way off the other end. We've seen her land a couple of times, almost at the end of the mat there. Very easy to see why, though, uh, from her vaulting that she has four of the top 10 vault scores in school history already. 9.625 for the first vault. Again, starting from a 9.9, that's a very good score. It's like running down the gauntlet of her teammates. That pike that time, very nice. That has to be one of the better landings that we have seen for a vault with that difficulty in quite a while here. In dual Absolutely. Games. By adding that pike in, she brings that score, or potential score, up to a 10 as opposed to doing a tuck. But she stuck this. She sure did. That is as solid a landing as I think I've seen anybody do in this building. and that score should go up for her. Still awaiting the score for the initial bar routine for Arizona State from Jennifer McKenna. As Katie Freeland stands by. And there is a look at Katie Freeland. The 9.025 for McKenna in the bars. Katie Freeland 
will be set to go in a minute. 9.725 for Castillo's second vault. So that gives her a new season best. And now we'll take a look at junior Katie Freeland, an all-academic Pac-10 performer. She moves immediately into her can stance of Giants. Come on, Katie. The timing is so important here. A little bit of a stall out there on this Giant. Another Come on, Katie. Come on, Katie. Come on. Flyway double back, and she does get that landed. That routine was probably not as quick as the judges would like to see. It had a little bit of stalling at the high points, but again, nice form. Get a very nice flyaway double back for that dismount. Christine Niebling in the vault. Hands from front top, that was a very nice vault. Christine, just a powerful gymnast. Christine in her third year is really the all-around anchor for this Washington team. She has a little bit of uh, companionship in the all-around finally this year, but really was the Huskies' only true all-around the last two seasons. Absolutely. She's certainly up to the task because she continues to improve and upgrade her routines. Really the hallmark of a good gymnast. 9.65 for her first ball, so very strong base. Gives her the opportunity to really try and go for it a little bit more, maybe try and get more height coming off the horse. Just short of the season. Yeah. A little bit of over-rotation. I think that's exactly what she did, though, was win for it, because she certainly had the distance on that one. So she'll no doubt keep that 9.65 for the initial ball. Meanwhile, Arizona State freshman Carrie Courtney is set on the bars. Two-time state club champion and a former member of the Junior Olympic National Team. At 9.6 mark last week against Minnesota. And the mark for Freeland in the bars, a very nice 9.60 for Katie Freeland. Just short of her career best and definitely a season high. She's ready to go. John Spini kind of giving her some last minute encouragement. Uh, the freshman's been a little hesitant. She was a little hesitant, especially on the vault in the creamy warm ups. Nice giant full place. The top set. Oh, just missed by catching that. And again, she needs a moment to collect herself and really concentrate to get back into the routine. Watch her again coming around, and you can see her hands were right there. She just did not get a chance to hang on. Now, John Spini talked earlier about nailing routines. What's the psyche of the team like now after two of your first three have missed the initial moves? Well, it's going to do one of two things to you. It's going to either motivate the remaining gymnasts because these scores become crucial now. You can have a couple of falls and not count them, but absolutely now people have to hit or it can be a landslide, cause an avalanche effect where everybody misses, which is definitely what you do not want to have happen. And she calculated that around a little bit to get that flyaway double back in. And you can see on her face, she's not real excited about that routine. Although if you're watching her, she is moving pretty well. That's a difficult to do once you've gotten back up after stalling out like that. And again, a flyaway double back dismount. Now we take a look at the school record holder in the vault for Washington, Junior Joan Green. Very intense competitor. Beautiful form on that. We saw her knees together in a very tight rotation on that hands from front. And a smaller hop than we often see, which shouldn't figure as much of a deduction. Watch her come in, got her legs together, just a nice tight tuck. 
Boy, that would have been real close to perfect if she hadn't had that hop on the end. That was a very good vault. Seven of the top 10 marks in school history belong to Joan Grieve as she's equaled the season high with the first vault. She'll probably try and take some of that momentum she's got going in on the pre-flight and transfer a little bit more up so she can come down and stick that one. Very nice. That should raise the score a little bit. Stacy Very Conley nice. there to congratulate her. And that was a landing. That was a great fault. You can see that concentration on her face and she just sticks it. That is super. Carrie Courtney, a 9.025 in the bars. The second vault for Joan Grieve, a 9.75. That has to please her. Season best for Grieve, and we move over to the bars. And Megan on, Wright Meg. for Arizona State. An interesting story. When Ariosu lost a lot of their depth in Brinkman and also Sandman, Wright was really slated to be on next year. But uh, got a little help from the club, which is going through some changes, and is academically eligible to start school, so John Speedy brought her in. And she's moving very well. Some nice, difficult release moves, and a really good thing with the team. They yeah, needed that. Right. That should be a good score for them. And all, all Megan Wright did in her first meet was tie for first in the vault against Minnesota. So, uh, yeah, no problem. Walk no problem. On, walk on, win an event. So our first look now at the freshman, Clara Kudilkova. She is a strong vault competitor. The Husky coaching staff is real excited about the fact that she's come in and contributed right off the bat. In fact, Clara told us she was surprised at the high level of gymnastics here in the college level used to international competition. I don't know what she was expecting to find, but she said she's been very impressed. It's a nice vault. Now, Greaves vault equaling the season high you see there. And uh, that also, the two of them are tied for sixth in the all-time, make it seventh now. Jeff Beckel straightened me out here as we've uh, <laughs> re-updated. in the Husky top 10, and a good score initially. Again, as we said, she's not had a mark below 9-5 this year. That's Gina Holleran waiting in the bars, as so we get set for Clara's second ball. Nice pointed toes on that, and certainly a gymnast used to the pressure, having competed internationally, and that was a good second fault for her. Four years on the Czech national team, a two-time national champ, and sixth in this event at the Worlds in 93. We watch her form again. See that look at concentration. Real good pre-flight. Comes in, she tucked just a teeny bit early there, or she probably would have had a little more height on that rotation. 9-6-0 for the second vault. And the score for Megan Wright on the bar is a very nice 9.7. Oh. This is actually Gina, Gina Holleran. Another one of the Allentown connections. Freshman from Whitehall, Pennsylvania is her hometown. And a two-time regional champion at the level 10 competition. Beautiful game. Come on, Gina. She put a feet on that, which is not a large deduction, but really the danger there is it slows down your momentum. We talked a little bit about talented newcomers. She's done very well in all around in the first two weeks, but now if we watch that, uh, that score is going to be a lot lower than the 9-6 she had against Minnesota a week ago. It should be. Looking at the deduction, she's probably going to take hitting her feet right. and also cowboying around that dismount. And watch again. Let's see. Ooh, it'll depend. They could count that knee down as a fall. I'm not sure they'll do that, though. And the other Husky freshman we talked about at the start. From Salt Lake City, Jamie Stocker with her first ball. Now, this is a difficult vault Jamie does, and this is her favorite event. That was a handspring front with a half twist, and that starts at a 10-0. She's already scored a 9-7-7-5, which puts her fourth on the top 10 list. You can watch her coming in here. Just a powerful gymnast. It's so difficult to get that half twist in before you land. She does it very well. 
to shoot here is pleased with that. Member of the national team at both level nine and level 10. She had a nine, six, seven, five on the first ball. Concentrating and getting ready again. Oh, very nice. And there was just a little hop on that. That should go up and score. She had great distance in her post flight, as well as some nice hype in her pre fight. So, Jamie, the final competitor in the vault. They score in the bars for Gina Holleran, a 9.25. And Dana Lister, the final competitor in the bars for Arizona State, senior from Tulsa, as you see. The team co-captain. Stauffer, a 9.75 in the vault. Just under her best, and Washington has another outstanding vault round. We'll tool that up in a second. We'll get ready for Dana Lister. And Dana really needs to hit her routine. She's an All-American as well as team is, and she should be used to the pressure. And I'm imagining she's going to come through for them. Tied for fourth in the bars. Pac-10 meet a year ago. Also won the event last week against Minnesota with a 9.6. Beautiful pirouette. Oh, boy, just disappointed. Getting back into it again, doing some giants, ready for her dismount. Fly away, double back, and she does stick to it. Another intense competitor. Okay, you can see she was just, her body was tilting too far forward there in that Jaeger, otherwise she would have been right on. And here's the dismount again. See, she's nice and high, good rotation, and she sticks that landing. Well, we're waiting for Dana Lister's score on the bars. Washington in the first rotation in the vault, a 48.475. That's just .075 below their school record that they set. So a very good first rotation for Washington. And there again, a look at the individual vault results. Grieve and Stauffer leading the way. Castillo with a very strong mark as well. And as we said, a 48.475 total for Washington. As you get a chance to throw out the low score. And Coach Levesque has to be pleased with that. It's a great way to start your meet. We'll give you Dan Lister's score when we return. Also get you caught up on team totals. Rotation one in the books here in Seattle. And we'll have more gymnastics on Prime Sports right after this. And there you see the team scores after the opening rotation. As we mentioned, Washington with a very strong floor exercise. Arizona State with a 46.60 in the bars. By the way, Dana Lister scored a 9.0 in the final spot for ASU. So uh, as we said, John Spini will have to be a little bit discouraged about that opening rotation. Well, they're coming up right now in their strongest event, the vault. Well, speaking of coming up, coming up right after gymnastics, it's, yes, the deadly duo. Mr. Nelson and Mr. Poyer, Husky profile coming up. This month's show takes a look at the French Connection, Tia Foucault and Laura Savasta, as well as those rabid Husky basketball fans. That and a whole lot more on Husky profile coming up right after tonight's gymnastics meet here on Prime Sports. Arizona State, you're looking at Terry Courtney, who's going to lead things off in the vault for the Sun Devils. Rotations, first for ASU in the vault. Courtney, Holleran, Wright, Naya, Freeland, and Kiever. And Washington will be on the bars. Starla Joy will get things started for Washington. And she'll be followed by Kudilkova, Stauffer, Niebling, Cooper, and Connolly. Carrie Courtney with the first vault. She had a 9-4 last week. 
against Minnesota. It was interesting listening to John Speeney with her in the warm-ups because she really was kind of grasping a little bit. And he said, ah, I'll leave it to the meat to get this thing down. You can see her coming in there with her handspring in front. And she was actually plenty high. She didn't really need to cowboy that around, but she did a little bit. Now for our novice viewers, go ahead and explain cowboy. Too. <laughs> cowboy is a Western term. Gymnastics bit here all of a sudden. Term we use when your your form is not exactly the way it's supposed to be. In other words, in that tech position, her knees were pretty wide apart, as opposed to being close together, which is what the judges are looking for. That perfect form. It's still a very good squad. Absolutely. You could really pick up the score here by everybody hitting and sticking those balls. Yeah. And of course, this uh, obviously is one of the rotations where higher scores are counted upon a little bit by teams. Absolutely. Taking a look at her again, strong vaulter coming in good and low, nice and high. A little bit of a cowboy again, but still a good vault. Starla Joy, first event of the meet. In fact, her first competition this season on the bars. Bob stepping up there to give her a spot. Very nicely done. A tough move to catch and she did hang on. Double twist that. It was an incredibly difficult dismount, and she had a little bit of a step out on it, but still a very nice routine for a star. Can take a look again here. A straddle over, which really launches her and moved her very well. Taking a look at the dismount again, and you can see how tight she has to twist and get all the way around two rotations in that laid out position. Very difficult. There's Gina Holler in the vault for Arizona State. Hands in front as well. Change in the team scoring, just so you know, Arizona State has been bumped up five one hundreds, forty six point six five. Lister changed from a nine oh to a nine oh five as we watch this vault again. Watch Gina. She had very good post flight, real tight tuck, which the judges like to see as well. That rotation taking place all in one spot. She had a 9.65 in the event last week against Minnesota. And scores a 9.725 for her first vault tonight. I would imagine she is probably capable of doing higher than that because she is a powerful vaulter. She was also first in the all round competition last week against the Gophers. That was a very nice handspring front. Sort of toes not being pointed. There wasn't a whole lot wrong with that one. You can see her again, just a very tight rotation in one spot. And just absolutely did not move a heel on that landing. And a 9.80, the result in that second vault for Gina Holleran. Clara Kudulkova getting set. Starla Joy's score in the bars a 9.45. I'm a little surprised at that. I think maybe she was missing a little bit of the difficulty that the judges are looking for. However, what she did do, she executed very well. Carly Rose, they're leading the <laughs> well wishers. Back to the ball. That's the Ginger, and you can see her legs came apart there, which is unfortunate because that is a dis, uh, deduction for her that she will have to take. But just stuck that landing beautifully. Megan Wright, first vault for Arizona State, as you see Bob Levesque giving Clara a little congratulatory hug.
John Speedy talking with Megan Wright. And you can see her coming in. Handspring front. Unfortunate step there because that was a very nice high vault all the way around. Every phase of the vault is good looking. We mentioned this was the event that uh, Megan walked in a week ago and just took first against Minnesota, no problem. You can certainly see she would be capable of that. Top club competitor in Arizona. That should score better. That was a very nice ball. Like a spring front, good clean rotation. Getting a little encouragement from John. Body in a nice line all the way around there. Just that little step out is what's hurting her. She doesn't look too happy with herself, although I think the, the score will go up for her on that last one. And it does to a 9.675. Meanwhile, Kadulkova is still waiting for her score as there is a judges conference continuing. Nine six seven five for Megan Wright. Now uh, everybody on the same page calling her Megan, so <laughs> got the BA straightened out. You'll notice that the Huskies seem to be competing with a lot more confidence, and all the coaching staff talked about the fact that the NCAA meet really instilled that confidence in the Husky gymnasts, um, gave them the opportunity to see what do the best in the country look like, and realize, hey. They can be right there with the best of them. And that's really one thing you need to point out. You look at Bob Levesque, okay, dual meet record of 40 and 43 in his fifth year, and you think, uh, oh, sub 500. But the level of competition, as well as the quality of gymnasts, and we talked about it a little bit, but really when Bob came in, you had a lot of local athletes who were good for the area, but not good at a collegiate level of competition. Now he's getting a better quality gymnast, but in the first three dual meets of the season, you're facing three nationally ranked teams. That's something a Washington program didn't used to do. And not just competing against them, but holding your own with them. And that's part of the hardest thing for them is once you get your gymnasts to believe in themselves, it's getting the scores from the judges that don't know you. There's Bob Lebeck in the background, and I'm sure Bob might be uh, tuning in tomorrow here on Prime Sports for more gymnastics as uh, he'd like to get a peek at that uh, good Oregon State team, traditionally strong under Jim Turpin. And the Beavers have a big uh, triangular against Seattle Pacific and Utah State. You can catch it tomorrow at 2 o'clock from Gill Coliseum right here on Prime Sports. Conference is over. 9.55 is the score for Clara. Jamie Stauffer getting set. already posted a 965 in this event this year as we watch her and she caught her toes a little bit we didn't see that at first in the routine but you could see it there and that she went on like that is pretty amazing because that really slows your momentum this is Michelle Nea in the vault the state and regional vault champion and she has the seventh best mark in the conference so far this year that is a handspring front with a pike on it, and she fell out of the pike just a little bit coming around. Looked like she might not have been high enough. Tied for first in the event with Megan Wright last week against Minnesota. Take a look at her coming in here. She was just a little bit low. If she'd been a little higher, she would have stuck that and gotten around, no problem. Nine two five in the first vault for Michelle. Nice 
off of that score, so she will probably stay with that first vault score. You can take a look at it, just dropping out of it on the end there. Well, we've got a minute here waiting for some scoring. I know we all want to sort of extend our best wishes to uh, Tina Brinkman, the senior. At Arizona State, the All-American. She was in a car accident a couple weeks ago, had a concussion, was hospitalized overnight. Uh, no other major injuries, but she's really being evaluated now week to week. And when, when you take somebody who holds three of your five school records out of the lineup, that's a pretty big blow. And I, I know the Sun Devils wish they had her along, but uh, we also want to wish her well and uh, hope that she recovers. Absolutely. The lucky thing for ASU is they do have the depth. Taking a look at Christine now in bars. 9.775 the score for Jamie Stauffer as Christine gets underway. The bars are an event that Christine said she's been working on tremendously hard because she considers it a weakness of hers. It's been a little bit low so far this year. 855 has been her best. of her teammates as well as she nailed that one. You can see her straddle over Mount, the look of concentration on her face. And, well, that's what you need to have happen is just to stay consistent, keep the routine moving, and stick those tough release moves. Nice dismount. There you go. A little hot. Good routine for Christine. Now the holder of the top vault mark in the conference so far this year. And that was an incredibly high vault. That was a handspring front with a half twist, and Kitty was way up in the air. When you watch her, you'll see she has to be a good four feet above the horse doing that rotation. Just amazing height. And she had so much height, in fact, she got that little step back there. She had a 9.925 against Utah, and backed that up with a 9.725 last week against Minnesota. 9.80 her score for the first vault. Certainly see why she finished third nationally last year in the vault of the NCAAs. Not going to take a second vault apparently. Certainly a gymnast that scores a 9-8 is entitled to do that. A lot of times the energy and effort to put in a second one where you may not score as well, uh, it's better thought to wait. Save your strength for another event. Heather Cooper getting set on bars. Christine Niebling's bar score a 9.55. Coach Levesque said that Heather Cooper is one of those rare gymnasts that when you are on, you're flawless. And when you're off, Nothing goes right, and uh, again, she has thrown some incredible bar routines when she was on. You can see her form is just perfect. Toes point, legs together. Oh, beautiful. There's a mistake going in the background. Their final vaulter, Kim Keeble, has uh, scratched and he's going to have another vault in the competition, so we're just going to talk more about that. Oh, beautiful routine. Very, very nice for We would certainly say that was an odd routine for her. See that nice giant swing there, great form. Half turn. Another half pirouette. And a flyaway with a full twist, and the judges are looking for that change in direction as well as working the low and high bar. Very nice routine for Heather. So we await the score for Heather Cooper, and as soon as she's finished 
Stacy Conley will be next on the bars because ASU's Kim Kiever scratching in the vault. Of course, the Sun Devils do have five very strong scores, but uh, electing not the vault at all, a little bit of a surprise there, especially since she was in the number six position. As a result, uh, here are the totals for ASU in that rotation. Courtney, Holleran, Wright, Nea, and Freeland scoring. And as we see, a very strong score is at 925, your lowest. Well, we've got to imagine that with Tina out, there is a little bit of pressure to preserve your depth in terms of your team. And uh, if he can take an opportunity as a coach, John, to, to save a gymnast and not put any wear and tear on her body this early in the season, he's certainly entitled to do that. Looking at Stacy. 9.65 for Heather Cooper on the bars. And Stacy Connolly set. Holder the only 10.0 in school history on this apparatus. Stacy, a real accomplished performer on bars. She really has the rhythm and the moves that the judges are looking for. A holder of four of the top 10 marks in school history. Back getting into his sister. Beautiful pirouette. Very nice. Great release he's working back and forth between the bars. Johnson. Flyweight double back with just a little cover on it. That was a nice routine. Crowd flashing their tens up there. Oh, crowd nothing. Those are parents trying to sway the judges. <laughs> we know better. <laughs> Stacy Connolly caps the second rotation for Washington. We'll take a look at her one more time. Beautiful Takacha. Just perfectly caught. Nice form. And she moves right on back up to that high bar. You can watch her form here again. Giant to immediate flyaway double back. Well, that wraps up the second rotation for the two schools. Stacy Conley still awaiting her score, and uh, we are as well. We'll bring that to you, get you caught up on the all-arounds and team totals as well when we return to Seattle on Prime Sports. You're watching the Washington Huskies on Prime Sports Northwest. Welcome back to Seattle. We're at the midway point of our meet. And a little change in scoring. Washington picking up some additional points in the bars. And Jamie Stauffer winning the event. Now as her score is bumped up to a 9.825. Gives Washington a team total of 48.80 for the event. You see Stauffer in first. Connolly second and Megan Wright taking third. And a tie for first place in the vault. The Sun Devils, Katie Freeland and Gina Holleran tying for first. Joan Grieve and Jamie Stauffer tying for third. So Stauffer off to a good start in the all-around competition as well. And uh, the team total is now Washington at 96.825 and Arizona State at 94.85. So some very strong scoring at the midway point. And of course, the Huskies have got to be just thrilled with where they're sitting right now. Almost two points out in front. That is a huge advantage. Now, of course, Beam is next, where there's always plenty of opportunity to uh, give yourself some errors, but they've really got a shot to beat ASU tonight. Washington's Beam starting out with Stauffer, Alyssa Pesci, first event tonight, Carly Rose, Clara Kadokova, Stacy Connolly, and Christine Niebling will anchor things for Washington on the floor. Michelle Nea, Kim Kiever, Kerry Courtney, Gina Holleran, Dana Lister, and Katie Freeland for Arizona State. Arizona State should score very well on floor exercise. It's one of their stronger events as well. And again, just looking at totals through the first two rotations. Washington doing very well in the vault. 
but also uh, pretty rare that you actually score better on bars than your opponent does on vaults. So a very significant result there in the second rotation. Most definitely, I'd say they really uh, picked up. And again, the NCAAs last year, the bars was their downfall, according to uh, Coach Levesque. Taking a look at John. John Spini and Bob Levesque getting set for their teams and Stomper set in the bars as you saw Jamie Mount right in front of the coach. 9-5-2-5, Jamie's best so far this year on the beam. Jamie has some very nice dance moves on the beam. Again, that's in many ways much more difficult than the tumbling elements you actually see on the beam. Laid out, gainer. Two in a row. And that is an unusual dismount. Very nice routine and a good way to start off on beam for the Huskies. You nail the opening uh, routine, it makes things very good for your team totals. You can see front tuck onto the beam, another very blind mount. It's tremendously difficult. That season high, you see last week against Minnesota was also a career best for Michelle Naya. First tumbling run. French front. Front hand spring out. It looks to me like she must have left off the tumbling element there. Yeah, interesting. John Speedy walking down to the corner right there as well. Pretty rare you have a coach to get spot in the corner on the floor. It must have been a visual marker for that run. ASU always has such strongly choreographed routines and performances. Backhand spring with a layout full twist. The leap series, which is a requirement. Moving for a third run. Front hand spring laid out front and she fell out of that, which is unfortunate. Gymnast. Jamie Stauffer, a 9.55 on the beam, so she's set another personal best. Keeps raising it up meet by meet, which is exactly what a coach likes to see. And Elisa Pesci, another senior, Oak Brook, Illinois. 9.0 her best so far this year. At least a flexible gymnast who moves very well on the beam.
wonderful dismount. Oh, just to gain her off the beat. These falls were unfortunate for her. That was a very nice routine otherwise. See the two back handspring step outs here to laid out gainer and she just about held on there and then had to just touch the beam to stay on. See Tanya Service giving her a little encouragement. Chaplin. 8.95 for the score coming in now for Michelle Naya on the floor exercise. We had quite a long delay for that. Our first look now at freshman Kim Kiever. Beam her best event. <laughs> Ready for that first run. That handspring double back. Very nice. She was plenty high. Was there on the end. Nice one. Certainly has some difficult tumbling in there. Arabian into immediately back handsprings with a full twist. Very nice. Alyssa Pesci with an 8.975 on the beam, as you see Kim Kieber. Now Rose on the beam. Carly, just such a stylish performer and considered one of the better gymnasts for the Huskies on the beam. Number nine mark in school history with a 9.8 over season high on Narrow little beam that goes straight around. Switch back into a turn to Very difficult to find the beam. Two back handsprings into a laid out step out. Very nicely done. Unfortunately, she was just a little low as she was coming out of it. Otherwise, a very nice routine. You can see that mount again. There's the two back handsprings and the layout step out. Just flawless. Now, Carrie Courtney on floor exercise. Kim Kieber's routine a moment ago, scoring a 9.425 for Arizona State. Right down the back handspring, double back, nice and high.
Very pretty routine. Taking a look at the back handspring with the double full bear. Clara Kadilkova in the beam. Carly Rose's score was a 9.225. Nice. Clara considers being one of her best events. You can see the speed with which she works. It will definitely be bad. 970, her best so far this year. That's the seventh best in the conference. Handspring, lay out, step out. She holds on to it. at it again very tough to get the height you need off that beam to get around twice and she just pulls it all the way around and sticks it perfectly Gina Holleran waiting for a conference on Carrie Courtney's score to be finished nine point five two five for Carrie Courtney Improvement over her floor exercise of last week. And Gina, an outstanding performer on the floor, one of her better events. 9725, her best. That's tied for sixth best in the Pac 10 early in the season. Two-time regional club champion from Whitehall, Pennsylvania, and a four talented freshman on the Arizona State squad. Take a look at the whip back into two back handsprings and a full twist. Makes it seem effortless, doesn't she? Kadilkova's score in the beam was a 9.60. We watched Stacey Connolly with her routine. 9.70 her best this season, 9.875 a career best. Stacy, a very strong beam performer. Beautiful stayed out beam. Spring, another back hand spring lay 
out, step out. Nice. You're really concentrating. Showing some flexibility. Pretty pleased as well, she should. See the two back handsprings into the layout step out, and she just nails that. That is great. Team MVP in each of her first two years, Stacy Connolly. I'm Dana Lister getting set for floor exercise. Scored a 9-1-5 in this a week ago, so a little low for her. pretty well on that. She had some difficult tumbling. You get the feeling this routine might be scored a little higher in March with that music, but uh, <laughs> I give an extra two tenths just for the Chieftains alone, so. <laughs> Look at the height on that pike double back. She just doesn't have a problem at all with it. Stacy Connolly's beam score, 9775. That is a season high as you look at Christine Niebling getting set to mount the beam. for the ninth best mark so far in the Pac-10 this year. She also has the number nine mark in Washington history. Christine has a lot of amplitude on the beam, which is something that judges really look for. Great score for her if she had not missed on that tumbling move. See the back handspring with the layout step out, and her hips were just out of line, so she just came off there. Katie Freeland set 
for the Florex. Dan Lister's score a moment ago, a 9-7-7-5, best of the rotation so far for Arizona State. Katie, an explosive gymnast. Nice and high, very good form. Katie has just beautiful form, finishing all of her moves, both dancing and tumbling. That should score very well for her. Interesting person I'd have to think to visit with. Katie Freeland, originally born in Saigon, graduated from high school in the middle of Nebraska, and now a psychology major at Arizona State. Take a look at her, Tamela. You can just see that she has perfect form and the height on that layout with a full twist. Just beautiful. Her final competition for the night. We will pass along Katie's score to you in the floor exercise momentarily. Uh, you're taking a look at exhibition competition for Washington, Stacy Bain. One of uh, two Huskies scheduled to compete in the beam, and uh, she'll get a workout in a non-scoring competition. But we are finished with the third rotation of our dual meet between Arizona State and Washington. And we'll have team totals and other scores and more information for you as we get set for our fourth and final rotation. Washington on the floor, Arizona State on the beam. Arizona State's getting set for the beam, and in fact, Gina Holleran set to start things off right now. She'll be followed by Jennifer McKenna, Carrie Courtney, Katie Freeland, Kim Kieber, and Dana Lister. Freeland coming in as Naya checks out, and we'll watch Gina Holleran in the beam. pick up the point difference in the last event. However, you never know. They've got one of the top beam performers in the country up last in Dana Lister. Full rotation, Stoffer to start things for Washington, followed by Castillo, Pesci, LaJoy, Kadokova, and Niebling. And before Jamie gets started, quick look at some all-around totals for you. Jamie uh, trailing Katie Freeland now in the all-around after Katie's score bumped up. Kadokova, Holleran, Niebling, and Courtney. Six all-around competitors now as Freeland enters the all-around by being added to the beam competition. And Jamie calls her floor routine interesting. And you can certainly tell by the music. Double pike and she was very high. 915 her best so far this year. <laughs> Katie 
you can hear the crowd getting into her routine. Beautiful tumbling, just really high. <laughs> Jamie said Florex is the only event that makes her nervous competing. creative routine. Plays that one to the crowd for all it's worth. Absolutely. Let's take a look again at her tumbling. And she just gets a ton of height for this. Pike double back, so much so that she took a couple extra steps, but she was up there. Taking a look at the end of the routine. Jennifer McKenna set for the bar, or the beam rather, for ASU. Gina Holleran's score to open for the Sun Devils a 9.575. Oh, and an unfortunate off cue there on the beam. First time on the beam for Jennifer this year. Her career best 9.775. Former national club team champion. Judges are looking for not just stability on the beam, but movement, a continuous flow, one moving to another. That can spring roll down, very nice. To a Valdez. Take a look at this back hand springer, that, excuse me, the layout step out, and you can see her hips were never in line with the beam on that one. Just now getting score, well, we're still waiting for the score, rather, for Jamie Stauffer on the floor exercise, so Eileen Castillo in a hold mode for the time being. 9.40 for Jamie Stauffer. And Eileen, a very strong tumbler for the Huskies. Back. A 
good routine for Eileen. Some nice tumbling runs in there. A whip back, two back hands brings into a pike double back. Very nice. Taking a look at our second pike double back. Not quite the same form we saw in the first, but still nice and high. Terry Courtney on the beam. Beam score a moment ago for Jennifer McKenna was an 8.30. Ooh, her head was real close to that beam on that one. That was two back handsprings, and I believe that was going to be a layout step out. didn't look, I mean, I thought it was the world's earliest dismount the way she came off this. Right, you take a look at this, and you can see her head was very close to that beam, and that is real disconcerting. It's one thing to get your foot on and fall, but it's another to not even hit it. Now she knew early, because you could tell she got the hand down for protection and everything else, but still. Melissa Pesci getting set on the floor, actually, the score for Eileen Castillo, a season best, 9-6-5. And this is a new floor routine for Alyssa. Number seven mark in school history, a 9.85. Her best so far this year is a 9.5. Music from Cirque du Soleil. High double back, nice and high. run. Whip back. Two back handsprings. Lay out with a full twist. Nice finish. There's a couple interesting things I'm seeing so far in this rotation. Number one, and I've seen it throughout the meet, if it's possible, Bob Levesque has even more team unity and togetherness with gymnasts pulling for one another so far during this meet. The other thing that's interesting is I looked up during that routine and watched some of the other scholarship athletes from the women's programs are here in attendance just in the background watching and Rhonda Smith and Michelle Perkins from the women's basketball team in back watching as we take a look now at Katie Freeland who needs a 9-4-0 to capture the all-around competition. Originally, as we said, not even scheduled to be in it. She could walk away from title. 9.025 was the score for Terry Courtney on the beam. It's a nice hand stand for Katie. 
to back handspring step outs. Again, her form is so excellent. Just beautiful positions on these leaves. Just watching again, laid out front with that four and a half twist, and just perfect. And there's a quick look at Rhonda Smith. With Christine Niebling, both had 9-9. Nine, nine. We'll take another look. You can see Bob Lovec in the background there, ready for that triple. Count them, three of them in there. Just an incredible tumbling pass. Kim Kiever on the beam now for Arizona State. Katie Freeland's beam total a 955. A 38.70 all around, moving her into first place. Back in spring, they out step out. I should mention too, Martin Tilbrook from the basketball team is here as well with uh, Smith and Ms. Perkins. Want to give equal time to everybody. This dance competition for Kiever. Kiever, a state and regional champion on the beam, also a national qualifier. She tied for first against Minnesota with that 9-6 last week. That hand spring to a hand step, very difficult on being. Takes a lot of control. twist on the end of it. That was a good, clean routine. Starla Joy's score on the floor exercise. That brings up Clara Kadokova. She would need a 9.90 to tie for the all-around, a 9.95 to win it.
In addition, a 9.60 would give Washington a new school record in the all-around, and that's regardless of what Christine Niebling would do in the anchor position. Clara's best so far this year is 9.625. And Florex is one of her better events and one of her favorite events to compete on. Pike double back a little low coming out of that, but she did not fall. and flexibility on that switch foot lead into the side area. Very, very nice. And looking at her dismount, layout gainer with a full twist. Beautiful form. Kadilkova's score on the floor X a 9.45. So Niebling will have to do a 9.55 or better to get the school mark in the team all around total. She's most definitely capable of it. By the way, that mark for Kadilkova a moment ago is her first mark at under 9.5 this year, so. Christine going through a very really difficult dance sequence into the corner. Very high energy routine.
excellent routine for her. No problem getting that 9-5-5. Oh, look at that twist into immediate punch front. Just outstanding tumbling. Lots of height. Well, we're going to keep you in suspense for a few minutes because the teams are headed off as well. And we'll let you know whether or not Washington has a new mark for a team total and also give you individual and all-around winners when we return to Seattle on Prime Sports. And Washington setting a new school all-around record, 192.55. Defeats Arizona State with a 190.60. Uh, a couple changes while we were away. Uh, the most uh, significant, Clara Kadokova moved up to a 9.5 in the floor exercise. So uh, she still keeps that uh, record of having 9.5 or better in every event so far this year. Taking a look at individual winners now in tonight's competition. We'll start things out with the vault. Katie Freeland, the uh, winner there, uh, along with Gina Holleran at 9.80. And Grieven Stoffer sharing at 9.75. It's the only event, by the way, that Jamie Stoffer did not have a new best in tonight, and you still see she finished third in that. Jamie winning the bars, Stacey Connolly second, and Megan Wright in third in just her second meet as a collegian. She posts another impressive outing there. Beam competition, Deanna Lister the victor, Stacey Connolly in second, and uh, Kim Kiever took third with a 9.75. And the floor exercise, there we are back again. The floor exercise, a tie for first between Deanna Lister and Christine Niebling. Starla Joy and Katie Freeland tying for third. And the all-around totals, Katie Freeland, who, as we told you, wasn't scheduled to be in the all-around, was a last-minute addition to the beam, turns around and wins the all-around competition for the meet. Jamie Stoffer with another personal best at 38.525. Kadilkova, another strong score. Niebling, Holleran, and Kerry Courtney rounding out the all-around competition. So, boy, for Bob Levesque and the Huskies, first off, they get a road best mark against Utah as you get a look at our all-around winner once again. Uh, they get the uh, road record a week ago and then turn around and set a team high total tonight and uh, beat a top 10 ranked team. So, uh, gotta well, be you got to be excited about that, especially when you look at Beam and consider the fact that the Huskies took some falls on Beam. That means they've got an opportunity to improve that team score even more. So, I, I think they have to be real pleased with the way the meet went. I think it's fair to say, you know, the, the number of years you've seen this program in action, that for a third meet of the year, these were pretty impressive performances on the individual apparatuses. We are seeing that skill level. Absolutely. You have to wonder what the Huskies have up their sleeves next because obviously they're not throwing their toughest stunts right now. They're going to save those till the Pac-10 meet. And they, they definitely have themselves pointed toward the Pac-10s and toward a return team trip to the NCAAs. Well, Bob Levec said that's their number one goal is to prove it wasn't a fluke last year and get back there. And I'd say they're well on their way. 